Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. Now obviously there's a ton of new content for anyone who plans to pick up the Dynasties of India DLC, but it turns out even if you're not, there's some pretty interesting changes for a couple of familiar civilizations. Specifically, a team bonus and three unique techs are being completely overhauled. So in this video, we're going to look at those in depth and how they impact those particular civilizations. As you've no doubt gathered from the title, the Inca team bonus is now completely new. Now, of course, their older team bonus of 100% faster built farms was about as close as you could get to a useless bonus. It saved seven and a half seconds about every nine minutes or so before horse collar, which meant a little over a 1% boost to farming and declined from there as getting more farming techs meant you reseed less often. After all of the farming techs were in, it was about a half percent boost to your team's farming, which really isn't great. It's now been changed to plus two line of sight for spearmen and skirmishers. While it's still not great, as I looked at recently with search radius, that makes them more effective at finding targets, so it's good in a difficult to quantify sort of way. Those are also two very common units, so most civs will benefit from that, and in fairness, Incas are already an average to slightly above average civilization by win rate, so it's not like they really needed a buff. Now that we're on the topic though, cruising the tech trees of the upcoming patch, I noticed a few other changes that are in the pipeline for unique techs, so let's take a look at those. The first big one is Vietnamese paper money. Previously, this gave a one-time payment of gold to all of the players on your team. There's been so much pushback in the community over one-time gimmicks that I think the devs are trying to get away from that. And the new effect is that their lumberjacks generate a trickle of gold, similar to Burgundian farmers with their unique tech and the poles trickle of gold from mining stone. It did feel like lumberjacks were due for the same treatment sooner or later, and this definitely ties in with the name Paper Money. To get a sense of the rate, with all upgrades, 15 lumberjacks in 3 minutes generated 57 gold, which works out to about 1.3 gold per villager per minute. For context, that means roughly every 23 or 24 lumberjacks is like adding one relic in an ideal situation. Good camp placement and wood upgrades are needed to get that rate, as they only generate gold while chopping. To get a sense of the other extreme, I tried it again with no villager upgrades, meaning no wood upgrades and no wheelbarrow. In that case, you need around 40 villagers to equal one relic. So the main idea is that you want to have all of your upgrades to get the most out of this, and it works out to about four gold for every tree you chop. Now while having effectively one or two extra relics worth of income sounds pretty strong, though note it is also quite costly. It's 600 wood and 350 gold, so even with 30 post-imperial lumberjacks, it takes about 9 minutes to recoup just that gold cost, though obviously the more lumberjacks you have, the better this tech looks. Moving on, the next overhauled unique tech is for the Saracens. They've had a few changes, but the one I want to focus on here is their new Imperial Age unique tech, Counterweights. This adds 15% to trebuchet and mangonel line attack for 650 food and 500 gold. Now that may not sound like a lot, and is plus 30 attack on trebuchets for example, compared to their usual 200, but this is actually huge. This allows Saracen trebuchets to take out others in two shots as opposed to the usual three. And here we have one taking out a faster firing Japanese trebuchet simply because it requires one fewer attack. They'll still probably lose to perfect accuracy Britons with Warwolf, and probably even Huns with their better accuracy, but this tech is instantly putting Saracens in the discussion as one of the strongest trebuchet sieves. Of course, onagers are also affected, including the Siege Onager, which Saracens have. While their base attack is quite high, there's a few units like Hazars and Bombard Cannons that need a perfect shot from a Siege Onager to bring down, where just that tiny bit of extra damage from this tech means you can actually finish them off in one hit. In a way, it feels similar to the Ethiopian's larger splash damage, and means you don't need to be as precise with each shot. Of course, the tech also means more damage from Onagers and Trebuchets against buildings, which is also a nice effect to have as well. And finally, the third unique tech overhauled was for the Slavs. They're losing orthodoxy and its armor benefit for monks, and instead getting a very cheap tech which replaces some of these stone cost of towers and castles with wood. You don't typically think of Slavs as a tower sieve given all their missing techs including Bracer, but 75 stone for a tower is a pretty good deal. Even better, their castles are just 390 stone, though of course you have to build the first one at full price to research the tech. I'm not 100% sure what need this is addressing, except for maybe the difficulty in massing Boyar, but I expect this will be a more popular tech than Orthodoxy, and is almost an automatic pickup given its low cost. At the same time, it may not be quite as strong as it seems, especially in Castle Age, since the stone discount is replaced by wood, and basically comes out to a town center worth of wood for each castle, so it may not be as easy to spam as it initially sounds. Also, in case you're wondering, after the tech they also repair with a mix of stone and wood. So those are at least some of the changes coming up. 
I'm sure this is all going to be part of a big balance reshuffling next Thursday to coincide with the new Indian civilizations. And again, just to be clear, even if you don't buy that DLC, these changes are still going to apply to you. Unless, I suppose, you're still playing HD, which is actually going strong with 4,000 average players, so shout out to you guys. That's all for this one though, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.